Hey guys, welcome back to the Alan Wake 2 project, part two, all right? So in the first little video, we built the general store, which you can see there. And now we're working on the base. So we're gonna build all the other stuff. The foliage, 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 however you say that, whatever, the green stuff. We're doing the green stuff, okay? So we're gonna start with this uh, foam base, it's polystyrene insulation foam. I think it's inch and a half. And we're gonna take a wire brush and we're gonna scratch the crap out of it because we're gonna throw some sculpt mold on there. We want it to stick, all right? sculpt mold yep, add a little water, okay? Yeah, mix it up. You gotta do just little batches, a little bit of a time because, you know, that's how it works with sculpt mold It gets dry and I'm not fast enough. It, it doesn't matter how hard I try, I'm not fast enough. Okay, so in the game, the the little market, sorry, general store is in the middle of the woods, and it's um, it's a healthy woods, very green, lots of um, trees and tall grasses, and boulders. They had boulders, so I'm using bark for rocks or boulders, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I am gonna use bark. I've done rocks in many many ways. All right, I've made my own rocks. I've um, used molds to make rocks. I've even, you know, used real rocks to make rocks. That kind of sounds dumb, but I've done it so many different ways, you guys. And um, I just love the bark. It's the best, it's my favorite, and I will probably continue to do it for um, the rest of my days. Okay, all right, so here we are. Little batches at a time. Adding some sculpt mold and my rocks. Want to make sure there's a you know some texture on the ground, and then you know those flat sides where I had to saw the bark in half. Well, I'm, I add a little sculpt mold there too. You know, kind of round it off. You know, make it look less like bark, more like rock. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, and those little stickies. That's where my uh, that's where the uh, lights are gonna go for the little general store. Okay, so now I've mixed a very thin consistency of plaster of Paris. I just wanna cover up the tin foil. If I, I used tin foil, I think just there. It was more like an experiment, you know? But I'm gonna use it, you know, on other little bits of the rocks just to make sure that, um, I don't know, that they look like rocks. Yeah, that works. Okay, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna put our store on, and thank goodness I pre-drilled holes and stuck those sticks in, cause yeah, it would have been hard to find them. So, yay, I did something smart. Here we are, we got it placed down, and now we're gonna use some plaster of Paris once again to kind of seal it down. And I was, and actually, I, I don't like the plaster of Paris. I mean, I should have used, see, like it still moves. Like, I should have used just hot glue, but I don't think my sculpt mold was quite dry, so I decided, oh, I'm gonna use this plaster of Paris, but it hardened so fast that it really, yeah, I ended up using some hot glue later, okay? Just thought I'd let you know. All right, here we are. We're gonna paint our rocks. Yep, we're painting our rocks, and it's, it's a watered-down acrylic paint, but it's not like a wash watered-down. It's a lot thicker than that, because I wanted to make sure it's sealed the bark, the wood. Want to make sure it seals everything up, but thin enough to get in all the little tiny nooks and crannies. See? Yeah. So we, we paint all those up, just a dark gray. And then we'll come back later and add some different tones to it. All right? So now we're going to also paint the ground um, just because we should have it painted. Just in case I miss a spot later when I'm adding all my dirt um, so that, you know, it, you don't see white and you see brown. It just blends in, right? Oh, you can see in the house. Look, that's that other cooler I made in the back. You see in the back? Yeah, yeah. I never showed you that in the first video, but I made an extra cooler. So you're welcome. All right, so yeah, just painting everything up. Now, sculpt mold is like my favorite thing ever for the ground, like for texture and stuff. I love it. But you really have to be thorough with your paint to get it in all the little nooks and crannies. Because, yeah, either see, you can even still see some white holes right in there. All right, so now what are we doing? We are building, this is the ice cooler out in front of the store. There's a little 
ice cooler that's obviously been sitting there for ages. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it looks pretty rough in, in the video game. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to make an ice cooler. I, I don't, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, y'all. All right. I'm just I'm looking at a picture and trying to figure out the angles. So yeah, it's not the most beautiful build ever. And I could have probably done it in a lot of different ways, but this is how I did it. And I, I just, I used some awesome balsa wood that is super easy to cut. Thank goodness. And I created the shape of what I knew this ice chest needed to look like. All right, and then I, I sanded it down, and then I, I I end up going back over it and covering it in plastic, which is what I'm doing here. Yeah. Yes, covering it in plastic because it's like a metal, and anytime I do metal, I use the plastic. I don't know if we've been over that before, but I'm just letting you know. Now we're gonna do a little bit of sanding, and I think I'm gonna set it aside. I think I think I do. And then I come back to it. I don't know why I do that, but I, oh no, I didn't. See, I'm still on it. Yep. So we're going to, we're going to cover it in plastic all over the place. Make it look good. Yes. Plastic. And I did scratch up that plastic prior to, um, prior to putting it on there so that it would be easier to paint for later. And now there's like this little thing on top. It's like, it's a sign. All right. It's a funky little sign. And I just wanted to have that correct and then I'm using this balsa wood here for a door and then this is that little thing that goes on top yeah see it's looking like an ice chest cooler ice cooler ice chest I don't know what they're called now I'm drilling some holes for a handle it's the easiest way to make a handle just grab a wire put some glue on there stick it in there yay okay now what are we doing oh yes so it has a picnic table out front a really cool picnic table. It's a log one. It's one of them log picnic tables, right? So I had to take th these round pieces and cut them in half and then and then cut them in half again, which ended up being really, really hard, guys, really hard. And then I ran out of logs, so I had to cut more balsa wood and make logs before I could cut them in half and then cut them in half again. It was a whole process. I thought this was going to be one of the easier things I had to make. But it wasn't. It wasn't at all. Yeah. And considering the size of the logs, them trees are pretty big. Which, ugh, I guess I was happy there. Because finally, when I cut it, it didn't have a hole in the center. Those are proper logs that I cut in half, and now they're super proper halves of logs. Wow. <clears throat> so I'm sanding them up, making them look good. Yep. And I realize, okay, that's probably don't need four. Oh, and see now I'm cutting smaller logs in half again which is very time consuming okay and I put a little glue in between each one of them and now I'm gonna glue this these parts on I'm literally I'm looking at a picture guys I'm I'm looking at a very detailed picture of how these tables go together so that I didn't screw it up and look dumb okay so just just uh, trust me all right, now we're doing a little sanding in between. Yep, a little sanding. And now we're, I don't know. Oh, we're going to glue glue it down to this log. Yep, we got it glued down to that on that side and that side. Yep, and then and then we got the seats that they're coming. Just wait for it. It'll make more sense. Right now it looks silly. But now we're going to, yep, see? Mmm, beautiful. Looking. That is a proper log picnic table, y'all. So nice. Someday I might make a real one. Maybe. Maybe not. All right. What are we doing now? Oh, a straw. Fantastic. Oh, a bottle cap. Yeah. Yeah. We're totally making a light. Like a like a street light. But not like on a street. But like in the woods and stuff. Which it is kind of odd that they're in there. But it's part of the game. All right. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe I'm actually allowed to use power tools? <sighs> It looked dangerous, but I knew what I was doing, okay? Um, yeah, so that cap seemed like a good top for a light. Look, it works. Yay! And the straw seemed like a good, decent pole, right? Yeah, but it's a little flimsy, so I got to, you know, st stick that stick up there to, you know, make sure that it's nice and unflimsy. Yep. Now we got to make it not look like a straw. We got to make it not look like garbage. 
So what better to use than dirt, right? Because I like dirt. <laughs> I could have used sawdust. I do use sawdust when I do the trees, but um, we're going to use dirt for the pole. I don't know why. Just because it seemed like a good idea and I, it was there. Now we're going to paint our, our beautiful log. I really love that log picnic table. I think it turned out great. Yep. And we're just using a, a watered down acrylic wash there. Yeah. Because I want, you know, some of the own natural colors to come through. Yeah. It's better that way. We've talked about this. Balsa wood. It was a pain to make. Um, oh, now we're, we're going to paint our ice machine as well. Yes. Paint it up. Make it look nice. And then make it look like crap. Because it's old. That's what we do. Yep. What are we doing here? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That part, it's got to be gray. Got to paint that gray. Yep. Nice and gray metal door, right? Now we're we're figuring out our ice part. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do some detail work with a marker at first. You know, sometimes it's easier to just use a marker and then come back over with the paint. Yeah. So it's got like that nice, yeah. You guys can see what I'm doing. I don't really need to explain it. But I just do it over and over and over again until it's about the color that it should be. Repeatedly. Yes. Now we're going to do dry brushing. Yeah. We're going to, oh, look how cool that looks when you dry brush it. Ah, I love it. That turned out so good. All right. Our ice machine's looking pretty nice. Too nice. We got to dirty it up and filthy it up. So it's been sitting there for a while. So all that nice work I did, we're just going to cover it with crap. So we're going to start with dirt or the gray. Because it's like, um, it's like over time, you know, the white paint just kind of deteriorates and then you get to see the metal underneath. And then that metal produces rust. So yay, look how great and crappy that looks. Now we're adding just a little bit more wash, you know, to like stain the wood because it's been weathered. We're doing some drippy, drippy action. You know I love that drippy, drippy action. Look how good that looks. It's fantastic. And dab, 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 dab. Yep, very scientific here. We're going to add a little bit more drippy, drippy, stainy, looky stuff to our ice machine because it's a little boring. It's, yeah. So, oh yeah, look at that. Now, that looks like a proper old ice machine. Sweet, now we're going to add some dirt. All right, so we're using some Mod Podge and water and some um, very fine, fine looking dirt. Fine looking Montana dirt. We're just gonna spread it out. Yep, we're gonna do a little, yep, looks looks amazing. Add some more Mod Podge. And that is just a cup with um, some good old fashioned Montana dirt in there and some pantyhose, pantyhose, like tight on top there so that all that fine little particles of dust comes out. Got that from Luke Talon, all right? Give credit where credit is due. I did not come up with that. That was a Luke Talon trick he taught me. He doesn't know he taught me, but he did. And it works great. And so, obviously, I added, uh, you know, some other stuff, too. But now we're actually putting down our ice machine and our bench. We're making them fin final. That's the word I'm looking for. Final. A little bit more dusty stuff. And then I like to go back, obviously. You see I add um, thicker, you know bigger chunks of dirt here and there just to kind of break it up can't look too smooth and nice right oh we're putting in our garbage can this is where all of our lights will be controlled through that little garbage can and yeah I made that off camera I'm sorry you know sometimes I run out of um, memory like my camera memory gets filled up and I just and it takes forever to like get the, the footage back onto my computer because I have to fight the kids for the computer. It's like this whole thing. So sometimes I just keep going. You know, I do because I don't want to stop. So here we are. We're just adding some dirt next to our foundation to make it look like it has been there. All right. That's what we're doing. And we're adding some. At this point, I am just adding all sorts of dirt, just handfuls of it. I've gotten over being all fine about it. So I must be getting... I must be getting bored because I'm just going for it. Now we're adding another whole layer of Mod Podge and water over the top just to make sure it's not going anywhere. All right. Now for trees. All right. So here's the thing. I didn't have any long, thick pieces that were long enough to make the trees because this tree's got to be big. It's like it's a big, some big forest trees going on. 
So I had to kind of connect some and, you know, glue pieces together and just make it work. So that's what we're doing now. We're just working on the height. Once we get the height, now we're going to work on the actual trunk of the tree. Get it all nice. Try to get it nice. Yep. I'm going to do some sanding. And that's a, it's going to be a big tree, y'all. But, you know, it's a healthy forest with some seriously old growth in it. I wanted it to look legit, you know, scale-wise. It had to be right. So we make a lot of trees. See, look at those. Nice trunks. Okay, it's wire time. Good old-fashioned gardening wire. Now, I like to sand it before I cut it. All right, I sand it and strip it down a little bit. That way it takes paint when the time comes. It takes paint a little bit better, you know? Sometimes it's all about the prep work. It's all about the prepping. Yeah, that's... So we, we take a piece, we bend it, we cut it. That's about a good size. And then we just go through and we just cut a crap ton more of that same size. Just going through, cutting them. Lots of wires. You're going to need a lot of wires. You're going to need a ton of wires. See, we got a good pile of wires there. Now we're going to go through and we're going to bend them all. And then we're going to squishy, squishy them with that needle nose pliers there. It's got to be a tight squish because it's got to fit into a small little drilled hole. So we're just go through. We're going to do all that. We're going to get that all prepared. Now this is the worst part. Well, it's all kind of the worst part. You got to drill each hole and then stick it in there. And then I'm just showing you how, you know, if you bend it in half, you get two for the price of one. See? It's like one of those Christmas trees. So we're drilling all these holes out. This is a very, very time-consuming process. Very time-consuming. And I, and I know I don't show you the whole thing, but I do. I drilled all the holes out, and then I stuck the, the wires in there. Because as you go, you know, you kind of want to see what it looks like. So you know where to drill more holes, right? So that's what I'm doing. And then, yep, we're going all the way to the top. And this is just one tree. This is just, it takes, takes hours. Guys, I don't show you all of it. You're welcome. But it, it looks great. I mean, it looks like a proper tree. Now we're going back through and we're pulling each one of those wires and we're adding glue. And so we're gluing them in because we want to make sure they ain't going anywhere. So we glue them in. Now you see that little, it's so, it's not focused real well, but it, it creates like this glob of glue that's a problem. So I take a little paintbrush and I smooth it out. And then I add, this is actual like sawdust. I got it from my shop. Yeah, I just pile it up into bags. My coworkers think I'm weird. Um, so you spread out that glue and you add some more sawdust. And it almost just makes it that much stronger. It holds the wires good. Now, they're all glued in. I'm going through and I'm hitting Mod Podge and water on all of the wires. And then I'm going to sprinkle some more of that dust on there. Because we can't just have wire, you know, limbs. They got to look like real limbs. So we're going to we're gonna do... And plus, they'll take paint a lot easier. So, okay. That, that we're going to set aside to dry. And we're going to make... We're going to make a wire tree. A full-blown wire tree and you start out with four about the same size you got to make them long you bendy bendy make them super long bend them in half make that end real tight and I hold it I hold it with the needle nose pliers and then I just start I s split them in half and I just start yeah doing exactly that that's what I'm doing right there and I go for as long as I want that trunk to be and uh Oh, yeah, see, I went a little bit longer. And then you just start kind of spreading them out and twisting. It's a lot of twisting. Lots and lots of twisting, y'all. You twist and you twist and you twist until you get to a point where you're like, okay, now we need another limb. We need another tree branch. So then we take and um, I'm going to show you. You bend it. Or no, what are we doing? Oh, no, we're going to keep creating the... Okay, so we're going to twist those ones first. We'll get to the bendy, bendy part here. Just keep twisting, keep twisting, just keep twisting, just keep, t sorry. Um, yeah, okay, twist, twist, twist. And then we're, I, I must have missed something because at some point we separated those and I don't know what happened, but we're twisting. Now we're bending. See, this is the bending part. Now we make a loop and we twist that loop. This is how you get the little branches. Twist that loop and you gotta do it a few times or it'll just come apart. So you twist the loop. And then you make another loop, and you just make a bunch of little loops, and you just keep twisting. You just keep twisting. Keep twisting. We're getting there. 
making all these loops and twisting. Yeah, keep twisting. So you end up with a bunch of little loops and the little extra wire bits you want to make sure and twist off too because otherwise, once you cut your, your little loops, they'll fall apart. So you just got to make sure you have plenty of wire to work with. That's the key to these trees. Starting out with plenty of wire. Um, it's the best way to do it. So we got a bunch of loops. Now we're going to cut them. We're going to make our actual branches. See? Now we got branches. And that one side is now complete. And my fingers hurt, so I'm going to use the pliers. It does, over time, it'll hurt your fingers when you consistently do it for a long period of time. I'm just saying. Just saying. Okay, so now we're going to move along pretty quickly. I showed you one side. Now I'm going to show you kind of quickly the other sides, I think. Yeah. See, that's a long loop there. I made a long loop. So I'm going to re-loop that, make another loop. You know, when you want a lot of branches. Now look at it. All right. So this is kind of like I'm trimming it up a little bit, trying to make it look legit. Nice thing is you can bend everything every which way. And yeah, it looks good. Now we got to make it not look like wires, right? So we're going to take that Mod Podge in water. I think it's a little bit thicker. I put it on thicker here because I want it to really stick. Thicken up the, just put it everywhere. Little, little parts, little bits at a time. Little bits at a time, then you sprinkle that sawdust on there. And it's very satisfying because you watch it go from wire to an actual tree. I mean, it, it ends up looking like an actual tree. You just cover the whole thing. Yep. And I use super fine sawdust. All right, super fine sawdust. I mean, it works best, I think. I, I don't know. It's pretty much the only option I have. So we're just going to go with it works best. Okay. And just keep putting it on there. Yep. Any part of the glue. Yep. Looking good. Yep. Here we get down to the bottom. Look at that. I mean, there's a little bit of a wiry look to it. But, you know, trees kind of look like that anyways. No, they don't, but whatever. Now we're going to paint it. So all of our trees are dry. We're going over it with uh, watered-down acrylic paint. And uh, it's a time... See, this is... I wish I had an airbrush. Um, you know, air, uh, air... Is that... That's what you call them, right? Airbrush? Yeah. Airbrush. I wish I had one of those because it would make that so much easier. But instead, I hand paint it with a, a, a paintbrush. Because I'm legit, y'all. I do things the hard way. Not because I necessarily want to, but because I have to. So, and we're going to paint this one too. Yep. Look at it. It's all nice and dry now. And you paint it up and it looks like an actual tree. It's like bark and everything. It's fantastic. Oh, we're, we're going to put stuff on it. Foliage. And we use um, some good old-fashioned Woodland Scenics. Uh, coarse turf. That's what it is. It's coarse turf. And you just do that tacky glue spray on there and this is kind of a time-consuming process uh, but the more the more wires you have for tree limbs the better because then it really all kind of starts to stick good so you just keep spraying it over and over again try not to get the trunk of the tree it's hard to not get the trunk of the tree but try not to all right try to stick to just the wires as you go because that's where you want all that clump stuff to actually stick you don't really want it to stick to your tree trunk and you just keep going until you get it to a point where you're like happy, it's fluffy enough, and it looks like a proper tree. This is probably one of the biggest trees I ever built. Wow, where'd it go? I'll, I guess I'm going to show you later that it turned out good. So now we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to do the same thing, same thing. Try and get it to stick. And it's hard in the beginning, but once you finally get it to start sticking, then it starts to come together. And I guess that was, you'll see them. You'll see them. Now we're going to paint our light. So we're going to do a simple gray on the bottle cap there. Yeah. Super unfocused. Yes. Okay. Gray. It's gray. Fantastic. I guess now that must have been good enough. I, I must be getting tired because I normally would have put a lot more effort into that. But we're just going to glue that sucker in because we got to have that glued in. And then we're going to add a little dirt to the base with some Mod Podge and water. And try not to be so messy. Gah! All right, so sprinkle some dirt on there. Now it looks like it's been there a while. It's legit. And as you can see, I've moved on to, instead of worrying about fine 
dirt. I just throw it all on there. Yep. Which it, I think it looks great. Looks great. Some more Mod Podge and water. Make sure it dries. Oh, here we are. We're going to do some soldering, which it's hard with all these different weird angles. I'm not going to lie, but um, we get her done. And yeah, so here we go. We're soldering. I know how to solder. Yay, me. Okay, it's not like I'm great at it, but I, it gets the job done. Okay. And I don't know. I think I've gotten better. I used to be, I used to overthink it way too much, but it's actually, you don't need much. You really don't need much. So you just, yeah, all, I could try and explain what's going on there, but I honestly, I, I couldn't even tell you. Put some electric tape around that. Hey, all the lights work. That's the important thing. Look, lights work. I love how those coolers light up. This is so cool. Now we're actually going to do grass. Okay, so we're going to do some magnetic grass. And um, I don't show you much of this because I'm awful at it and I keep getting in the way of the camera. And I, I don't know. I hate doing magnetic grass. The look is amazing. I'm not going to lie. Like it, It's like the best looking thing ever as far as grass goes. It looks realistic and great. But... I am awful at doing it and it could just be my static grass applicator that I got it like super cheap like forever ago and it shocks me a lot and it's annoying but um, and this certain static grass is not woodland scenics I started out with a, a short um, it's got some browns in there I thought it looked cool because it was like colorful it wasn't just straight green so I, I started out with that and then I think I do go back and add some longer stuff or not maybe i don't maybe that's a good base and now we're moving on to the sign <laughs> so bad when i can't even remember my own builds ah oh, so we're cutting out our sign so there's a sign on top of the general store in the game and it's the cauldron lake general store so you know i just put it on you know pencil now we're just using a, an acrylic marker pen thing and we're self-explanatory really what I'm doing it's really hard to write that small though and then we go back over it with white so I do the black first because everything's kind of outlined with black and then I try the real fine brush and do the white and then I come back with the marker and touch it up if it needs touched up which obviously it did because it looks way better now I'm gonna scratch the crap out of it because it looks old and run down, so we're just gonna go right over everything that we just did and scratch it. Now we're gonna use a, a watered down acrylic and uh, cover the whole thing in this watered down acrylic color. Yeah. And as long as you let your, your other stuff dry, it should be just fine. If you don't wait for it to dry, it would have been an awful disaster, okay? So yay, look at that, it looks pretty good. Now we glue on these things that were supposed to help it slantedly sit on the roof. Um, I'll be honest, I ended up breaking off two and not using all of them because they just weren't the right angle and it's, it's hard to just fake that stuff. <laughs> it, yeah, it looks great, yay! And I don't show you all the parts that didn't work. So now we're gonna paint our foam base. We gotta make sure that that's, you know, nice and black. I'm gonna paint it black. I like to paint things black. And I got me a spinny thing so I can just spin it and paint it all professional-like. Mm-hmm, looks great. Oh, now we're gonna add some moss to the, so there's those cracks on the roof and um, I just decided to fill it with glue and moss. So I'm using some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf. It's like green, it's got little tiny bits of yellow in it, and it looks, it looks mossy to me. So that's what we're doing. We're just gonna fill those spots up with moss. I love it. I did this on the Hocus Pocus house and it turned out really good. Um, instead of trying to put like a piece over the top of that crack to cover it up, it just works better. So that's what we did. Yay. And that's where all the moss and, and, you know, tree limbs would end up anyways. Oh, we're going to come back and dry brush our rocks because I forgot to do that. Just using some lighter tones, going over it, doing that dry brushing, making all that um, detail pop out, all that texture 
I love texture. It's great. Oh, we're gonna put see now there's only two on there, but we're gonna we're gonna glue that sucker down. Yep, looks great. Oh, premium fake moss. Love it. This stuff looks like that. And can't really see, but you'll see better when I start sticking it on there. I mean the whole general store is just it's like it's being taken back by the forest around it. So it's it's covered in bits of moss and um, all sorts of stuff just growing up everywhere and it's beautiful beautiful and abandoned and it's awesome so I'm just going through sticking a bunch of this stuff on there and I'm just using some tacky glue to put it down and then when I like it I'll come back over it with some um, I'll show you here in a sec we'll add some alcohol well, yeah you gotta do alcohol it just makes the glue stick better and then so I yeah there's the alcohol yeah and then um, I'll come back over it with some glue and that glue will just make it it'll harden it right up make it stick and stay forever it almost like cements it into place and that's another trick I learned from Luke Towen once again nobody knows who Luke Towen is he builds like the ultimate little teeny tiny railroads okay amazing just love it um, anyway so we're doing the same thing here same concept just adding we're putting down the moss first and then I come back over the moss with some wooden woodland scenics because the moss I mean it looks kind of fakey all right just a bit fakey because it is fake so I go back over the top of it with some woodland scenic stuff to make it look a little bit more realistic now we're putting our trees in yes see look at that tree it's ginormous I know but it's supposed to be it's the right size for this forest it really is and I did I did quite a few pine trees and then th this is that other little tree y'all yeah the wire tree looks legit we got another pine tree over there it's a it's a very very like I said it's a very um, healthy forest with lots of old growth and new growth it's a bit of a oh my gosh we're done okay uh, oh look at the blinds guys oh my favorite thing ever okay I'm gonna let you guys watch this this is the finale so I'm gonna throw some creepy music on because it's well it's a creepy game I mean the game that I got this from is a creepy game right so we're gonna put on some creepy music and you guys just sit back and enjoy That's it guys. It's finally done. The video editing took the longest, I'm not going to lie. No, the trees took the longest. Heck, I don't know. But I want to thank you guys if you've watched this all the way to the end and both videos even. You guys are amazing. And I probably don't say this enough, but my subscribers, you you guys 
I just appreciate you so much. Thank you for continuing to watch. Thank you for your continued support. Um, I will do this as long as I possibly can because um, I love it. And I'm just following the dopamine, right? Right. Okay. All right. Till next time, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.